beyond Australia. Our programs on this frequency will commence shortly. Welcome to these programs from Reach Beyond Australia, life-changing radio. You reach beyond to us. Mara par pan vishwas rakho, o sakhat shram uthaunar, vaitnu karnar, bharti ladaila, tamhe sagra mari paase avo. Ane hoon tamne vishama apish, mari jhusri tamhe puta par lo, ne mari paase shikho. म के हूँ मन में नम्र तथा राकड़ो छू ते जीव में विसामो पमशो केम के मारी जोशी सैल है मारो बोझो हल्को मित्र हूँ ते बोझ उठा बहार लदायेला वैतरू करना बनी गया है आप जात ने मे वैतरू खुटिया You are listening to Reach Beyond Australia, but we also like to hear from you. If you have a comment on our programs, want to give us a signal report, or simply ask a question, we would love to hear from you. Our email address is radio at reachbeyond.org.au. Reach Beyond Australia, life-changing radio. Radio broadcast. On today's program, Dr. Neufeld continues his series, Journey to the Cross, with a closer look at what happened immediately after Jesus was arrested in the garden. So let's go back to the Bible as we examine today's message, Friday, the journey goes on trial. three trials of Jesus were held before the Jews and the last three are held before the Gentiles. Jesus is brought before Pilate. Pilate was the Roman governor who normally had his residence in Caesarea but during the Passover moved along with a garrison of troops into a place in Jerusalem called the Antonio Fortress. This was a large fortified building and on the inside it housed a grand open courtyard called the Praetorium. The Jewish leaders lead Jesus to the residence of Pilate but they will not enter to themselves. According to Jewish tradition, observant Jews were not to enter the residence of a Gentile, otherwise they would become ceremonially defiled. I hope you see the irony. They have held an illegal trial in the middle of the night, they have abused their prisoner, have called false witnesses, and were determined to kill the rightful heir of the throne of Israel. But it hasn't occurred to these men how defiled they already are. The Sixth Commandment says you shall not murder. The Ninth Commandment says you shall not bear false witness. And all these men care about is how ritually clean they are so that they will not be defiled for the Passover and the upcoming Sabbath. And so Pilate is forced to go outside and meet with them. He wants to know what charge they have and they don't say. What he claims to be the Son of God will not even register with Pilate. The Romans were tolerant of many religious claims and many gods and goddesses. If another crazy man runs around Israel claiming to be a god, what's that to do with him? They decide to sidestep the issue. They say they would not bring anyone to him unless the matter were really quite serious. Finally, they say he forbids paying taxes to Caesar and claims to be a king. Pilate takes Jesus into the praetorium and asks him, Are you the king of the Jews? And after a lengthy conversation, Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world, and I am sending no one to fight for an earthly kingdom. Well, Pilate has heard enough. He goes out with Jesus and tells the Jews, I find no fault in him. Now there's a great commotion. All manner of charges are brought against him, but not that he claimed to be the son of God. Pilate is amazed Jesus gives no answer at all. But what can you do with a group of zealous religious leaders ready to whip themselves into a lather? And the man who is at the center remains calm. The last thing he needs now is some kind of a riot. What to do? And this now leads to Jesus' fifth trial. Pilate finds out Jesus is from Galilee. Ah, just the ticket. He sends him off to the residence of King Herod. For Galilee is his jurisdiction. Herod is right then in Jerusalem. This is the same Herod who had John the Baptist beheaded. Pilate despises this man, but let Herod sort the matter out. He understands Jewish religion after all. And Herod is delighted. 
Perhaps Jesus will do a miracle in his presence, but Jesus just stands there and refuses to speak to Herod. So Herod mocks him and treats him with contempt and dresses him in a kingly royal robe as a joke and sends him back to Pilate. Somehow, and we don't know how, this act between the two men forged a friendship between them. And so we come to the final trial of Jesus, his second appearance before Pilate, and this is brutal. At first, Pilate is determined to release Jesus. His wife has had a very disturbing dream, and because of the dream, she tells him, don't have a part in this man's death. Pilate takes note. But by then, the religious leaders have stirred up the crowd into a frenzy, and they scream out in front of the praetorium, they want Jesus crucified. It will be mob justice. And so Pilate takes Jesus and has him beaten, scourged with whips that contain bits of lead and bone meant to rip out flesh and expose sinew and literally make his back look like ground beef. They take a crown of thorns with long, an inch and a half sharp nail-like thorns and ram it into the top of his head and they beat his face, probably breaking his nose and making a bloody mess of his appearance. In this utterly dehumanizing treatment, Pilate wishes to engender some form of pity in the crowd. At the very least, Jesus will look like he is not a threat to anyone. If he is a king, don't worry about it. I can have my way with him any time. And so he trots out the disfigured Jesus. He announces, I have found no guilt in him. But the sight of the bloodied and beaten and mutilated Jesus engenders no pity. It's like the smell of blood before sharks. It sends the crowd into a frenzy. Finish him off. Crucify him. It's right here in the midst of this that Pilate hears something that makes his blood run cold. No savaging Jesus did not bother him. He was a battle-hardened soldier who had tortured more than one victim. But it was this strange thing. Why did they want him dead so bad? And then, in an unguarded moment, the awful truth comes out. He made himself out to be the Son of God. Suddenly, a different reaction than anyone had expected. Suddenly, fear shoots through Pilate. What is this? He drags Jesus back into the praetorium. Where do you come from? No answer. Pilate says, listen to me, you won't talk? He's now panicked, hoping he's going to intimidate Jesus. I have the power to put you to death. And now for the first time Jesus speaks. You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. And Pilate knows instinctively what that means. His soul is right now being weighed in the balance. So Pilate is done with the games. He comes back to the crowd. No, absolutely not. I release this man. But the frenzy of the priest is now evident. If you release him, they scream back. We will report to Rome that you released a man who made himself a rival king to Caesar. And the problem was that at that moment in history, Pilate was having his own problems with Rome. He was himself walking through a political quagmire with Rome where his own loyalties were being questioned. The chief priest knows this and will play it for all it's worth. And Pilate is now desperate. Will you crucify your king? And then comes the second awful truth. They shout back, we have no king but Caesar. I want to stop here for a moment because, as many of you know, there's a, a terrible history that has developed over this series of events. During the Middle Ages, it had become common to accuse the Jewish people of being Christ killers. They forced Pilate's hand. Slanderous statements were made for during this time of trial when Pilate wanted Jesus released. He then washed his hands and said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. And the crowd screamed back, His blood be upon us and on our children. But the Bible has no part of this kind of thinking for several reasons. The first is simple. Had Jesus not died, there would be no atonement for our sins. Secondly, the Jewish people are, as Paul says in Romans 3.19, God's lesson book to the nations. They show us what we would all do if we were in their place. And finally, the Bible calls us to honor the natural descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That we in Christ are grafted into the vine of Israel. So the Bible will not allow anti-Semitism as a result of this trial. What the trial of Jesus really teaches us is that all of humanity had no place for God's King. We would all rather have had Barabbas rather than Christ. The trial of Jesus, therefore, ends up not being his trial, but really, when you think about it, it's ours. 
What will we do with Jesus? Since he will not allow any other option but the one he's given us. Since he insists that he is the Son of God and the rightful Messiah in this world. What will we do with Jesus? He demands all of us answer the question. I know, I know, Pilate would wash his hands and say, I am innocent. But he was not. We want to do the same. We too want to wash our hands and say, if I'd been there, I'd never have done what they did. But the story of the trial of Jesus makes men into monsters and disciples into cowards. And the only innocent man who attended that trial was the one who stood condemned. All humanity stands guilty at the trial of Jesus. And therefore, when we rightly understand what was done at that moment, we must all bow our heads and say, Oh Lord, I see myself. Some of you know the painting by Rembrandt, his self-portrait. In it he is wearing a painter's smock and a painter's hat and uh, his paintbrush is in his hand. But he stands at the base of Jesus' cross as he too is one who nailed him to that cross. Rembrandt had it right. We must read ourselves into that story. We must not shout out to the Jewish people Christ killers, but we must see in their action our action as well. We must see our solidarity in putting Jesus to death. And that must lead us to a sober self-evaluation and a willingness to repent. Dr. Neufeld, you can't help but be impacted by this passage and by the reflection on everything Christ went through and what he suffered. I guess, to be honest, you wonder why. Why was it all so necessary? He was going to die. He could have just died. Why all this beating? Why all this bloodshed? Such a good question because we should notice the gore, we should notice the beating. There is, on the one hand, that physical suffering of Christ, which is so real. But on the other hand, of course, we know that there is the emotional trauma of being abused the way he was verbally. All of the false accusations that come against him, his unwillingness to even respond to it, because there's really nothing for him to respond to. There would just be more accusation that follows. And when I put all of that together, I've got to come to this conclusion. Maybe what God is wanting to communicate to us is the depth of our sin. Christ needed to bear this because that's what our sin actually looks like in front of God. And boy, I get this feeling that when we really grasp hold of that, we'll never think about our sin in the same way. We really should look at the death of Christ and say, I see not only horrible suffering, I see myself. Thanks, John. It really gives us something to consider as we meditate on sufferings of Christ and how necessary they were perhaps for us to understand understand the magnitude of what he has done. Well, we look forward to your continued messages tomorrow on Journey to the Cross as we consider more of the happenings of Good Friday and how Jesus was led to die on the cross. Back to the Bible, leading people into a dynamic relationship with God. Now, many of you have probably heard or received our Bible teaching resource called Confident Living Magazine. This is sent once in two months. This magazine offers even more engaging Bible teaching articles from qualified Bible teachers and writers. It has articles that are relevant to life and exclusive updates on the ministry of Back to the Bible. The magazine addresses on difficult issues of life and your journey with God. If you have not asked for your copy of Confident Living magazine, then don't delay. So be sure to ask for your personal copy. Call us at 9492-440070. Call us at 9492-440070. Or send your request by email info at backtothebible.in.